126. Now for the rest of the world. Uh, I already told you this once already, but Richard Chalvinal Trench. The word pictures in the New Testament. You will see the different kind of words. Uh, that sounds alike, but there's a little difference in there. Like anathema and anathema. Anathema and anathema. He talks about it. What English word comes from anathema? What word do you think? What? What? Anathema? Who's the word again? Anathema. Anathema. Well, some people walk around damning this and damning that and damning this and damning that. It means to damn. Anathema. Okay? It means to curse. Okay? It means to set aside as unredeemable. When you are anathemized by the Catholic Church, that means you are put out there in the hell and you can't get out. All right. The word. Okay? It's just going to give you one word. Okay? Today, like this, you like this kind of stuff. All right, all the theme. You like to do this with us? Hey, there it is, all the theme. Comes from two Greek words. All right, it's got a prefix on it, right there, and that means up. And this word here comes from tithomy. What does tithomy mean? Anybody know what tithomy means? Tithomy. Randall, do you remember tithomy? I've heard it before. Tithomy. Yeah. That means to place. To place. All right. Now let's get what this word means. When the Catholic Church anathemizes somebody, that means they curse them. They, they are accursed. Okay? Anathema, anathema. Okay? Uh, it means to place up, to place upon the wall. That's what it literally means. In, in ancient mythology, in Greek culture, they had pagan temples. Okay? Pagan temples were always banks. They had a banker in there, one of the priests with a banker. You could go in there and put your money in the bank and everything. Or you could, uh, if you donated tapestries, ever seen tapestries? Mm -hmm. well, these are fine, well, ta or, or carpets, some type of like ancient Persian carpets and stuff. These banks or these pagan temples are covered. I've walked on, on carpets that were three and four thousand years old. Do you know that? In the Middle East, you walk into some of those uh, mosques over there, and the and the carpets down there are old, boy. They were old in the time of Jesus, some of them. And even uh, uh, Mohammed, they were old when he was born. Okay? Some of those Persian carpets. Well, now when they, when families donated different things like carpets, or if it's a sword, or a tapestry would be placed upon the wall. Okay? It was placed upon the wall in a pagan temple. Placed upon the wall. Okay? Now how in the world did we get anathema from the place upon the wall? Isn't that weird? Let's go back and chase the word a little bit back there. Well, when you took something and donated it to the temple, it meant that you couldn't buy it back anyway in this world. You couldn't redeem it back to your family. Like one of your one of your uncles or aunts went over there and took some ancient piece of china they put it on the wall for decoration or a shield for your family or some great big uh, uh, plate with a platter it was gold or silver or highly painted china or something like that and they placed it upon the wall nobody in the family could ever redeem it back ever it was one way all right so then, if you're on a thema, if you're placed upon the wall, you, if you're unredeemable. All right, now do you understand the name of unredeemable? Richard Chavonol Trench will tell you that in there. And then, also, another thing. For instance, in different times in the Bible, you know the Bible has some pretty wild things in it. If you want to read about violence, about intrigue, Sex, mm -hmm. cruelty, 
downright meanness sometimes. Patricide, matricide, whatever. Okay? Read the Bible. If you go back here and read those books, you'll see some of all of them. You, uh, you go back and you read those things like that. It just wild things in the Bible. Okay? And then you use the term, like somebody was set aside, uh, a person was uh, set aside for some reason. They couldn't be redeemed back. Remember the one girl that was that was uh, basically the guy was going to have her killed. He said the, the first thing that walks out the door, I I I I I'll have a It can't be redeemed. It goes into the temple. Remember about uh, was it Samuel that his mother said, if you let me have a child, that I will. All of him, I he would be put in the temple, never come back, never come home. That's another word for all of him. Right? So there you have the two different terms for all of him. One of them is the curse and wants to dedicate to where it cannot come back home. All right. All right. Does that work? Playing with? Yeah. Now when you when you hear Paul say, "Let me be a cur on a thema." That Israel might be saved. A curse and unredeemable. All right. Romans 1.26. The Atuto. Arat Dokin. Altus. Otheos. What's the next word? Ace. What's the Hebrew equivalent of ace? Sign of the direct object. What is it in Hebrew? Et. All right. Page 119, if you want to write that down here. All right, page 119. I'll write it down too. Page 119 and page 84 for et. It's the Hebrew equivalent. Just remember those two words. You'll learn a little Hebrew and a little Greek. Et, pathe, atimios. Hey, Gar, they lay off. I told Meta Loxon, Pain, Visa Cane, Grayson, Ace, Pain, Para, Visa. All right. Let's look at this. I mean, there's strong, strong language here tonight. I told you the book of Romans has every doctrine in the Bible in it. It doesn't leave anything out. Paul the Apostle didn't leave anything out of Romans. If you if you have the book of Romans, you have the Bible. And just think about it so many hundreds of years ago. Go back in the New Testament period of time. When Paul said, bring the scriptures to me, what scriptures was he talking about? The Old Testament, that's all I had. We, they were receiving the New Testament. Now this letter is written to the church at Rome. Okay, to the church at Rome. The most legalistic bunch of people in the world. Because Rome was what? The capital of the Roman Empire. Alright, this is where the home of the emperor was. All of that. Well, the Apostle Paul writes letters. Now, maybe you're in a church in Ethiopia. You don't have the 27 books in the New Testament. You're lucky to have one. Now, if you had the Book of Romans, guess what you'd have? A Reader's Digest, condensation, or uh, condensed version of the whole Bible. Here it is. The, have you ever heard of the Paulines? The Paulines, uh, if, you, if you have heard me teach church history, you know who the Paulines were. All right, the Bogomils, Petrobrusian, Novatians, all of these different ones, the Cathari, the Paterines, these are all Christians, early Christians, basically, if you study what the doctrines that they taught, they are fascists, way back younger, okay? The Paulicians, there was a deacon, went into an area, I believe it was in Armenia, he was hiding out, this dude, had all of the epistles of Paul with him. Now, all the epistles of Paul, 
Now this is, you know, about, about 200 A.D. 200, 200, 300 A.D. This guy has all the epistles of Paul. And uh, he stayed in this person's home and he was sick. He had been hurt and uh, his body was damaged by persecution. And he recovered in that home. And while he was in that home, he wrote all of the letters down and gave the guy a copy of all of the holy epistles. And this group of people became known as the Paulines. Alright? There was novations. Boulder mills. All kinds of different ones. The Paulines are the ones that had all the writings of the Apostle Paul, all the doctrines of the Bible. I wrote a little book about 40 years ago called The Doctrines of the Bible. Basically, there are, it's like 26 or 27 lessons, I think. Surely you were in my class on Doctrines of the Bible. I've taught it here for about five or six times. Uh, there are more doctrines in, in the book of Romans than I have in my Doctrines of the Bible. I did a pretty good job of getting them all down, but there are more of them in here. I skipped over a few of them. I put some of the basic ones down. Now, here's what we go. Because of this, is what he says, Diototo, because of this, Paradokin, he handed over them. Now the word hand over here, it means uh, one way trip. He delivered. Okay? It's basically, in this term here, you might even say anathema. They were placed upon the wall. Them, the God. Alright? Now these people are the ones that rejected God. We're talking about the God rejectors. In the first chapter of the book of Romans, we have all kinds of a foundation. One of them says that all men have had a certain amount of life. Every, every person that ever lived in the human race, every tribe, I don't hear, care how far away it was, knows about God. God, in them, they know about Okay? So they're all by right excuse, and God always judges every man according to what life he has. <coughs> on our website, Randall got up last night. He took it off a cassette tape. I didn't even have any way to put it over on CD at this time. My CD, the cassette burner, is, and vice versa, versa cough that I'm trying to find another. He put it up. It's called Preparing for the Battlefield. Old Darius Mack. He uh, was a tough guy. Great big Cajun about this tall. Now, I was six foot two back then. I threw a picture on the website of me standing beside him. I looked like a shrimp. I was 220 and six foot two. I looked like a little bit child. He was a ma sergeant major in the United States Army. And he was in uh, Anzio Beach for 45 days in the trench there. He was with a guy called Moxie Gumbo that uh, had been with him all the way through the service for a long time. Moxie Gumbo watched his back. He watched Moxie Gumbo's back. Moxie Gumbo was no food player out of West Virginia. Moxie Gumbo uh, killed people viciously. I want to tell you something. You weren't around Brother Matt that he wasn't preaching to you. I don't care where. He might have called you a low-down gutter snipe and any other thing under the certain term. I mean, he, he didn't have any bounds to his language. When I was in the Middle East, I thought he was going to get us killed over there. He looked down when we were flying into Rome, Italy. We looked down, he said, right down there. He said, right down there, boy, I had to kill old Boxy Dumbo. He killed him. Up and killed him. Boxy Dumbo was a vicious man. He had killed... Uh, Germans. He'd kill Germans. He would shoot at Germans and shoot a leg or arm off of them and laugh. And then their friends try to come out and, and save them or rescue them. He'd shoot them in the leg. And every now and then he'd shoot one in the head and kill him. And this laugh. Old Matt told him a lot of things. He said, somebody killed you. He said, one time he said they were in this trench. And, uh, some of the Germans were surrendering. They were, it was bad, bad. And one of them 
crawled up and stuck his head up on the black top on the other side, pulled his body up, his legs were paralyzed. And he knew, and Madden knew he was going to surrender. And when he got up there, he looked, it just about daylight, he looked over there, and there he, he was, his chin laying on the, the black top on the road. He said, Comrade. He said, About that time, he heard a shot. Moxie Gumbo had shot him right in the head, split his head open with a 45. Go to surrender. He turned around, put that Thompson machine gun underneath his chin, and he said, If you were worth one of these bullets, I pulled the trigger. He said, One. Hard man. Sometimes you see people that are hardcore, that reject God, hard, with the hardness in their heart. Now, I know one thing about old Moxie Gumbo. He heard the gospel while Madden was around. I know that. But he was in a trench over there at Anzio Beach for 45 days, starting to death. Now, you look on that website, on the front of that website, and you'll see him standing there. And he's about this broad. Okay? Just like this. His hands are about this wide. We, we, you know, when you, how many of you been around horses? Horses are 14 hands, 15 hands, 16, 17 hands. They didn't measure them by Brother Madden's hands, I guarantee you. They'd have been real tall. Harry's man's hands, four, four inches wide, I think his must have been seven. Monster of a man. They're starving over there for months. Angel Beach, they were there four months. He was in one foxhole in one trench for 45 days, starving. I knew him. He was about six foot eight, some six foot six, something around there. Weighed about just shy of 400 pounds, probably. When he got out of that trench over there, he was 145 pounds. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. 145 pounds. One morning he woke up and he had a little coffee and he said it was precious as gold. He made some coffee on the coals and burner. And he said, oh, Moxie Gumbo. He said, Moxie Gumbo, want some coffee? He said, he didn't say nothing. Didn't look at it, didn't do nothing. He said, Moxie Gumbo, you want some coffee, you want to wear it, or you want to drink it? Never said anything again. He said, Moxie Gumbo, he said, you want to wear it, you want, to, you want the coffee on your in you. He said about that time he turned around with a knife and went right through his throat with it and stabbed his fist and his knife right in the wall right beside him. He had gone nuts. He'd gone stir crazy. He looked at him and he said, his eyes were just crazy. And in the, the recording that's on the website, he'll say, I have to take care of him. Of course, I have to take care of him. What he meant is he killed him. Right there. He pulled his pistol out and shot him. Right there, kid. He said it would have taken 15 men to contain him. And he said, I couldn't spare him. He said, I couldn't spare him. He said, if you get somebody that's like a weak person, that's a little skittish and a little nervous and everything like that, he said, when they lose their mind, he says, you put them in a straight jacket and sometimes they come back. He said, when you get a brave person like that that, that makes sport of killing men, he said, when they lost it, forget it. They were gone. They'd used up all their energies and they energy. They'd already lost it. There was no way back. Handed over. He handed him over to the Lord, just like that. You got it. I've been dealing with him for two or three years. Now you got it. Hand it over. Deposited it. He deposited him in Sheol that day. Because of this, he handed over them, I'm accused these plural third person pronouns, the God unto the passions. Now, these people that have rejected God, now he's going to turn them over to the base passions, like an animal. He's going to turn them into animals. What happened to Nebuchadnezzar there? Remember what happened to Nebuchadnezzar? He thought he was the greatest king of all the earth. What happened to him? Marilyn, have you taken these pictures yet today? Okay. Yeah. okay, I want you to do that. We're going to put you up on the website. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he built a statue of himself and everything. He thought he was the greatest king in the earth, and God built him up to, didn't he? He was the servant of God, basically. All Romans 13, 
all governments are set up by God, are allowed to be set up by God, okay? <coughs> he allows them to do Good or bad, even Hitler. China, North and South Korea, all of it, Cuba, whatever. Okay? All set up. Nebuchadnezzar, God turned him into a base wild animal. And he went out and he ate grass like a goat. A pig, even though he eats grass, you know, pigs all members like a man. A cow. A sheep. Out there mowing logs with her teeth. He did it. For how long? Remember? Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. It says other passions, pop a. The word passion there means to experience. All right? Experience. It means to experience. It is something like, you know what? Uh, when Nicole was a little bitty kid, I worried about her a lot. We lived up in the wilds of the valley. And I always had a wood burning cook stove in every house except for my wife won't let me have one in the house. How foolish. It's better to cook on a wood stove than anything. With an oven in it and everything, you know, that's really great. Anyway, I had a wood stove up there. And I had put little rails around so the coat didn't get to it. And I used to take her over there and I and she played with wood all the time. And, and the little bitty kid, her arms were about that big around. She'd oh, she act like the incredible Hulk, you know, and go this and that, picking up this wood all the time. I tried to keep her away from that wood so and I put her hand up there too. It's hot. I said, bad. Bad. You experience something bad. I've seen people that were burned really bad at times by a stove. Burned. Have you ever seen people burned by the old wood stoves? Fall against them or something, burn their arm or their leg or even their face sometime in the old days. I didn't want that to happen to her. So I held her hand up there and, ah! Just like that. I wasn't going to touch it with her, but I wanted her to know that it was dangerous. God gives us everything in this world. He gives us an appetite. You hungry? You hungry? We're about to get hungry. Mm -hmm. All right. You hungry? Marilyn's hungry all the time. I know that. You don't walk from the morning till night. That woman's thinking about food. <laughs> when I go to bed at night, she's cooking. When I wake up in the morning, I can smell the house's smell of something she's been cooking. Always thinking about food. Well, that's food is. Good for you. You should watch the cooking world, don't you? I have lots of theological books. She has lots of cooking books. And reads the books like I'm reading theology. The Bible. Well, food is good for you. Food, you can eat yourself to death. You can. But if food is good for you. It's necessary. You know. All right. And, uh... By experience, you know, when it's hot, when it's cold, you try to stay in some temperate climate. You don't want to be too cold or too hot. It says passions of tenios. Passions. In our bodies, God gives us passions to procreate, basically. And he gives us, we're going to study a word in a little while, of love, on the table. These are words that uh, eros. The word, a Greek word for passion, love, passion, sexual passion is eros. Okay? We got our word erotic from that word. This is what it's talking about here. Okay? Passions. Now, love is good. It's good. The desire to love is good. That's real good. My wife, uh, when she saw me, she fell in love with me, didn't she? After <laughs> She wanted to latch on to me and not turn loose. That turn loose yet either. 
<coughs> That's been a long time ago. God gives us this desire to be loved and to love. And a woman has a desire. Uh, God made every sensory nerve in your body. And man, he did the same thing to you. For pleasure and for companionship. But there's another word. We get our word pornography come from fornail. Fornail. Romans 126. Romans 126. The word uh, <coughs> fornail. People uh, sometimes love pornography. It's abstract, but people will fall in love with pornography instead of reality. All right? Instead of reality. And that's not good. It, it's passionate, it's desire, and uh, it is. Uh, gratification. It's like tasting something real good, like chocolate cake. Chocolate cake brownies. Brownies. Hot fudge Sunday. But there's like that in sexuality also. Now the first thing God talks about here is, is, is females. He said, unto passions of dishonor, all tame it. Will the word Timothy remember? This is not Timothy. This is not honorable. This means dishonorable. It means filthy. It means vile. And the things even for females, the lay the lay females. That means uh, the word the uh, lay there. This comes from the the Hebrew word for this. What would it be, Brother Randall? You know what the Hebrew word for this is here? Up? Oh. No. Shad, El Shaddai, God Almighty, but it means a woman's breast, the all-nourishing one. This means here the ones with breasts. That's what a bloomer means. Ones that give suck. That's what it's talking about. Shad in Hebrew is equivalent to this word, uh, Thale. It means literally nipple is what it means. It means that... Uh, to give suck. For females, it means uh, uh, the, the ones with breasts of them, it says, meta locks off. They transform. Third person, plural, first heiress, and dignity active. They transform. They are transformed. They are changed. The natural. The natural. Tracing the natural use that the females like males and males like females. That's the natural thing, okay? But now these are not natural. The natural, the fusi came, the natural use unto that one or that word ace there, extension or limitation of thought or verbal action. That's the idea of the action here again. Et is the Hebrew equivalent to, to it. Unto the beside thesis, something that's not natural, besides nature, it is completely against nature. When God created woman, he created her out of man. He took woman out of man. Man he created in one. Man was the human race. It says that he hypnotized, hypnose is a Greek word. He hypnotized him, put him into a deep trance or sleep, and then he took from his sides, he took he took from Ish and Abam, he took Isha out of man woman. And he formed her to correspond to man. Okay? They fit together where they would become one, naturally. Okay? They fit together. That's the way he made it.
And then it says, these women have changed the natural use of their bodies. They don't fit together anymore. They don't fit together. 127. 127. Homios. Homios. Hey. Kai. Hoi. Arasenes. Arasenes. Alphentes. Cain. Pussy Cain. Grayson. Hayes. Zelaya. X. A. Ka. Thayson. Next one. N. N. Next one. K. Orexe. Alton. Ace. Alelus. Arsenes. N. Arsenes. Tain. Aske Masune. Kater. Da Zomenor. Kai. Tain. Ata Mistian. Pain. Ade. Tase. Plain Ace. Altol. In. Eltos. Aho Lombon. Non Tase. All right. Now that's a long verse. I originally hoped to get ten verses a night out of this class. So far, in the Book of Romans, it's been absolutely impossible. Now, I, I'm telling you, if I just skunk jumped over this stuff, you wouldn't get the theology. And the Book of Romans is a book of theology and doctrine. Okay? Leviticus 18 and 22, 20 and 13, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Uh, Genesis uh, 19, 1 through 11, 38 and 21, Revelation 22, 15, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, the second law, Deuteronomy, 23, 17 and 18, Philippians 3, 1 and 2, and Matthew 7 and 6. All cross reference to these two verses that we have just read. Can somebody go to Leviticus 18, 22? Leviticus 18, 22. <coughs> Leviticus. 1822. All right. This is 1822. All right. Who's got that? Anybody got that? Young lady, do you have that? Yeah. Read that for Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. All right. An abomination. It is on a female. Alephema. Now, you know what it just said in the book of Romans? It says when people absolutely reject God as God and they reject his creation as creation, then it says that he hands them over to Alephema. They are damned. When somebody gets into a false religion, it's pretty hard to get them out of it. Because demonic, demonic powers, spiritual powers are therein. Demonic powers are therein with lust also. It's the same one. Okay? Now, can a person get out of a false religion? Out of Mormonism, out of Jehovah's Witnesses, out of different things, even Catholicism? They can get out of that. Every now and then somebody gets saved. That's a miracle. It's good. Can a homosexual be saved? Sure. But God changes their hearts when that happens. It, you know, when we when we are convicted of sin, righteousness, and the judgment to come, then you don't want to go back into that because that's what was taking you to hell. And this thing specifically says that these people were delivered over to Satan. They were literally they damned to themselves by doing this. All right, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, also Paul wrote that also. And then uh, Romans 1, 26 and 27. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. Who's got that one? 
First Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. You, two of you guys got these automatic Bibles. I got it now. Okay, go ahead, Brother Dave. Okay. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites. All nor, go ahead. 9 and 10. Yeah. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor ex- Portioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, all of those things are sins, aren't they? Mm-hmm. All right. Now, there's a weird place in the Bible, Revelation 22:15. Revelation 22:15. Let's look at that. The word there, this uh, sodomites. We go all the way back to the book of Genesis, you know, and we see who the sodomites were. Evidently, back here in Genesis, the sixth chapter. Evidently, from the rabbinical teachings and what we see there from the original language, angelic beings had sexual intercourse with females, and they raised a race of monsters. Okay? They were nephilim. Now, they have been throughout history. We've had here, and of course, uh, Goliath and his bunch were nephilim to Og, and all these things were nephilim. And nephilim means fallen ones, okay? Uh, in in Sodom, these angels went down there, and these men wanted to have sex with them. Now we haven't looked at all this word yet, but the word for male here means a uh, a male with a male form, female with breast nipples, and this man has a male. He's a male, all right, and that's what it's saying. Well, these sodomites wanted to have sex or relations with these angels. They look like men. Okay. And the old uh, Lot, he even offered them his virgin daughters, but they didn't want them so much that they wanted these men. Because they'd already been... Now, the book of Romans tells us what had happened to them. They'd already been damned. All right. Revelation 22... And verse 15. 22 and verse 15. Uh, Rebecca, are you over there? But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. All right. I had a dog show up my doorstep today and I couldn't get rid of her. Beautiful little old dog. Blue eyes. Looks like part pit bull and part... Uh, What's those dogs with blue eyes? Uh, Queens on healer. She showed up, she wouldn't fly. Cats were scared to death, and she laid down there and just trembled and everything else. She laughed on me, and there she was. Now, I can't believe that God doesn't want dogs in heaven. I can't believe that. But the term for dog meant a male homosexual prostitute. That's the word. So you put down there male homosexual prostitute. They had them. Back in the Greek and the Roman times, if you were a lesbian, they got the, the form of a woman up there over the door into a brothel. And if you were a male, then they had a, a male form up there, sex organ, and that's where you went if you wanted, if you were a, a homosexual. Both of these. And God gets both sides. He, he, just, he gets the women first, and then he gets the men now. Revelation 22. That's not talking about a dog. That's talking about that is a figure of speech. That means a male homosexual prostitute. All right. And in the New Testament, in several places, it alludes to that. Philippians 3 and Matthew 7 and 6. This is the same thing. Do not bring the price of a dog to the house of God, the price of a dog that was a male prostitute with men, male males with men, and females with females. They had them back then. They had them all the way back in the days of Ahab and Jezebel. Okay. It's nothing new under the sun. All right. Likewise, and both, and also we are kind of like two. Likewise, yes, yes. That's literally what it says. There, likewise, take how I, which means. Yes, also. 
the males, the ones with the male organs, having left the physique, the natural use of the ones with breasts, well, they uh, burned intensely, set ablaze, third person plural, first there's indicative passive, they were set on fire. They were hot. In the lust. This means to flame out. It means to burn. To inflame with anger or lust. And here it's talking about the lust. In the lust or raise, that means desire, passions of them. Ace, look at that word, extension limitation, the thought of verbal action. Ace, alelus. With one another of the same gender. Ones with male organs in male org in males with male organs. That's weird. Then they don't fit together very well. The Aske Ma Sene. By the way, the word flamed out there was only used one time in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul used it here. That's the one time. It's what we call a, a Pauline word. And then we have a Aske Mosene. It means before. All right? It means indecently, shamefully, deformed. Deformed. They have deformed themselves. Two times that was used in the New Testament. Here in Revelation 16 and 5. Okay? Working down, kata and ergo, ergo I. It's a nominee, plural, masculine, present, participle, middle voice. Working down for themselves. All right, indecently, shamefully, deformed, working down for themselves, and the antemista theon. This means they're going to get paid back. Lex talionis in Latin. Lex talionis. What does that mean? Lex talionis. Remember that? What does that mean for the round? Lex talionis. Paybacks. There's going to be payback. Yet, what we have is auto and mistios. We have the word pistols, which is wages, and against wages, you're going to get paid in full. These people will be paid in full. All right? And uh, repayment in full, all the way up to the top, which accuse the singular feminine relative pronoun. They kept on binding themselves in error. Look at that word there. Third person singular and perfect indicative active. Deo. It means they kept on binding themselves in error. Hase planace. We got our word planet from that word planace there. That means to be uh, in error. It means to be on the railroad track of error. It means to be on the road of error. The wrong road. The Indians uh, are my people that say that uh, if you are walking on the red road, you're following God. The red road. But to get off the road, to go out the pathway, and by the way, that's the word uh, what is the Greek word for uh, sin in the New Testament? One of the Greek words for sin. You know what that one is? Uh, I know Brother Hubbard got up one time and was preaching. He said, What's James? He said, What's the word for the resurrection? You remember what that one is? I said, Anastasia. That's it. He said, That's the word. What's the word for sin? Come on up. What is that word? Hamartia. That's one of the words for sin. I've heard many preachers say this because Thayer made a mistake in his lexicon. Did you know that Thayer made a mistake? Thayer made a mistake in his lexicon. He took the word Chata in Hebrew, which means to miss the mark, and said it is equivalent to this word Greek. 
does not mean equivalent to this word Greek. Amarchia does not mean to miss the mark. And I told preachers that. I said, that does not mean to miss the mark. And they said, well, that's what Thayer said. And I said, Thayer's wrong. He's wrong. Not that at all. It means to go out of the way, go out of the pathway, to get off the road. Our epitome, that means to fall aside. Okay? And so with this one here, this means to get off the pathway, off the beaten path that's to God. The narrow road that leads unto what? Righteousness. And the broad road leads unto what? Destruction. The broad road there means the, the other pathways. The dead ends. Okay? The dead ends. Males and females. Shamefully, two times in the New Testament, working down unto the just reward. By the way, this word here, onto, onto it, mystion, that's a Pauline word too. Paul invented that. It's not found in any other writing that he plays out besides Paul's writing. Right. Which they kept on binding themselves in the era of them in themselves. Lex talionis, apo lombon, non tes, nomine plural masculine, present part of simple acting. They kept on receiving back. I wrote so many years ago, men have to pay for this type of sin in their own bodies, diseases, incurable things. Not only are their bodies uh, stained and uh, deformed, so to speak, their souls are also deformed. <clears throat> God will pay their sin to them back in full payment. Lex Talion. 128. Anybody know what that first one says? Hi. Tothos. Ook. Now that word ook looks just like ook, doesn't it? All right. It's got a smooth breather on it. Edoki and Masan. Home. Theon. Ekane. In. Epi. Nose. Paradokin. Altu, Pothios, Ace, Adokimon, Nin, or Noon, that is, Poyane, Ta, May, Kata, Konta. Let's go back and look at this word now. There are these words. And just as, that comes from Kata and Host. Okay, Kata and Host. Kata means down and Host. Right? Now, just as. Not, adverb of negation. Glorify, assay, thought fit. That word, idokimazo, saw on there, is third person plural, first terrorist, and dictative acting comes from dokimazo. Okay? And this means to be tested and verified as good. A long time ago, people would take a coin, and what did they do with it? Bite it. Bite it. To see if it was really tasted like. Do you know what gold and silver taste like? They have a taste, don't they? They do. And they bite it and see if it was the right hardness for gold or silver. They bite it. There's taste and pliability. Gold and silver are malleable. Okay? Have you ever, has anybody ever tasted lead? Lead does not taste nor feel like gold or silver. Now we are beyond those things today, aren't we? We don't bite our coins when we get them. Matter of fact, you shouldn't even put the things in your mouth because it's what we call filthy lucre. <laughs> germs. And even dollar bills and stuff that got a lot of germs on them. You don't stick them in your mouth anymore. We have multiplied diseases upon this earth because of sin. God told mankind, spread and multiply. Don't live in cities. You live in cities, you're going to have lots of problems with health issues. And 
they did. And they have. And they are. Just as not glorified, assayed, sought fit, the God to have in knowledge. They didn't fit. They didn't see fit to think of God as God. Marilyn, I... Marilyn was raised hard all her life. She was abused a lot. And she always trusted her in her little... What was that Bible? What color was that Bible? Yeah. The little red Bible. And she sat there and read that Bible. And she looked. She always had a garden and everything. I mean, she was just pretty much in prison. Got her family. And there she was. Hoping to have a life and a family someday. And wanting and desiring to have children. She had names for them. But was never given the chance to even have one phone call or to even think about it. Having a wife. And she trusted in her little Bible. She would read her little Bible wherever she went and looked at it. And she prayed. Would you tell them what she prayed for, Marilyn? Come on. Oh, well, I'll tell them. She prayed that she could learn about the Bible, that God would give her an Indian. She wanted to marry an Indian. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. And he had to be a cowboy. And he had to be able to teach her about the Bible, and she wanted to have children. That was her desire. That was it. But she read that little Bible, and then she would watch the, 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 her lettuce grow, and her beans, and carrots, and okra, or whatever she was growing. She'd watch this, and she'd watch the power of God. And she always believed in God. It was natural, wasn't it? Look a tree out there, or look out a blade of grass, or any tree, or fruit vine or whatever. Grapes and she see God. That's natural to see God. And everything to grow. But some people shut it off and try to make excuses how it evolved into being. Why grasshopper couldn't even evolve. Nothing could evolve. Man couldn't evolve. Your eyeball could evolve. Fantastic. But people have uh, refused to have the knowledge of God in their head. So God handed them over, reprobated them. Look at that word, handed over there. He reprobated them. Them the God unto a reprobate. A cracked pot. A cracked pot. You know, when, when, they, would, when they would take and take pots and they would, uh, they would have a potter, they would do the pots, and then they put them in a, in a kiln, and then they would take them out, and, uh, and they'd look at them real closely, and if it was no good, it was a cracked pot, they smashed it. That's the term right here. They, they're cracked pots. There are, they are reprobate. There are cracked pots. Reprobate. Reprobate really means one that has denied the faith. Now, since God deals with every man's heart, what do you have to do to get reprobated? You have to refuse God. No atheist will ever go to hell because he didn't, wasn't convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment to God. Many people are atheists and they don't want to believe in God, and one of the first things they don't believe in is hell. I don't believe in hell. Why, you know, the Bible talks more about hell than it does about heaven? And the longitude, the, the, the longevity of hell and heaven are the same. He's told he owns, told he owns. Oh, all eternity, ages upon ages, that eternal fire, hellfire, and eternal life, and eternal heaven. But the Bible talks more about hell than it does about heaven, because God wants to warn us that we can become crack pots if we reject Him long enough. A reprobate noose. A rep that's one of the words for mine, remember. Noon. Acutely singular. To do the things not being normal. Not according to oil. Present, participle, acting, accusing, plural, noon. Right. Beautiful. One ancient writer said that uh, they have abandoned the building 
God has abandoned the building. Every person in the building, aren't you? You're a dwelling place. Every person is a dwelling place, a building. And God wants to live in there. But when God has abandoned you, when you abandon a building, what do you find in abandoned buildings? Rats. Bats. Snakes. Lizards. Vermin. Let's think about the vermin that it can inhabit somebody's life mm -hmm. that has abandoned God and God abandons them. Look in heathenism, the, 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 the terrible, terrible hedonistic religions that they have, where they torture each other. There are people that torture each other in sexual activity. They even kill people. You can go down in South America, there's places down in South America where you can go down there and rent yourself a prostitute, a male or a female, and you can kill them. It's allowed. Isn't that weird? Isn't that sadistic? Isn't that something wrong with that? Wrong! Crack pots. Reprobates. Outside of the normal, paranormal, beyond normal, the buildings become uh, what they call dens of dogs, rats, snakes, and of the underworld. The places of darkness. Unrestrained animal impulses. Now, the Stoics use this term in their religion and thoughts. 129. We're getting there. We can't, well, there's a lot of theology in there tonight. We are making words. We're making progress. Pep, play, roll, menus. I'll say. Adikia. Poneria. I heard that word. Pleonexia. Kakia. Mestus. Fofonu. Fonu. Eridos. Sulo. Kakotheos. Si de Ristos. Now this verse doesn't end there, I'm telling you. This keeps on going into the next verse. But whoever divided the Bible in verses, well, we stopped there, but we're really into stuff. It's related to the next verse. Uh, they were having been filled up and saturated thoroughly to the brim and overflowing. That's what that term means right there. Uh, perfect participle passing, having been filled up to the brim and overflowing with unrighteousness, with evil. Right, Marilyn, did you get all my pictures coming? <coughs> okay. Having been uh, saturated thoroughly in all unrighteousness, ponaria, word ponaria. That's that's practice the evil. That's when you practice doing bad. Kakia, that's what we call the Adamic nature, Kakia. Okay, we're going to see that word right over here just a little bit further. Kakia. But this word called area, this here is prostitution. This is homosexuality. This means that it means to twist up something that's natural. To change the natural desire from a woman for a man, a man will become male prostitutes for men and for women. And women will become prostitutes for other women and for men. So they will sell their natural beauty and they will prostitute it for money. God gave them that beauty. You know, God gives you, you either are pretty or you are. Usually a woman's pretty, at least when she's young, so she can catch somebody. And a man is sometimes handsome when he's young, so he can catch somebody. 
And then when they get old, they just put up with each other. Because they don't make talk. <laughs> and sometimes, some people carry their beauty into older age, and some are handsomeness, and some don't. But by that time, they've been loved a little bit, and there's an attachment there. Okay? All right. Having been saturated and filled up in all unrighteousness, wrongdoing, wickedness, injurious wickedness, twisted desire. Pleonexia, that means to sail around and grab everything in sight. There are people that are so greedy, they want to sail around and grab everything. Like a spider. Throws out his way of it. And everything that goes by the web sticks to it. I use a lot of Native American illustrations because I'm an Indian. I'm one of the savages here. <laughs> but the word for... Uh, White man was ictomy. Ictomy means his fight. Because he wasn't satisfied living in God's world. He wanted to put a web on all of it and control it. That's what they said. So they called him ictomy. Somebody that wanted to sail around and grab everything inside. Covetous. Sail around and grab. To love more and more and more. Have you ever seen somebody that had so much junk they moved themselves out of their own house? They didn't have any room to live? Covetous. I'm talking about you. <laughs> Kakia. Kakia, that means Adamic nature, Adamic evil. That means something you don't have to practice. You're just bad. We're all bad because we're related to Adam. Okay, kakia. That means the evil bad. Evil inside, from head to foot, you're just evil, okay? Because we're a dandy. Masseuse. That means filled up to the brim. Packed down and stuffed full and overflowing. Can't get any more in the box. Filled up. People will fill themselves with evil. Like I talked about a while ago, some people will eat themselves to death. The food is good, but they just keep on eating day and night. They never quit eating. They'll they'll have breakfast and then they'll snack till lunch, and they'll eat a big lunch and then they'll snack till dinner time. Just keep on eating. I felt like that yesterday <laughs> and the day before. I had hypoglycemia, and my blood sugar wouldn't come up to 100. It would not do it. I ate and I ate and I ate and I ate. I said, boy, I'd hate that to do. This is terrible. I'd eat and my blood sugar would take a dive. And it was just kept on diving, kept on diving, kept on diving. I was so sick of eating, I couldn't hardly stand. I couldn't even sleep for eating for two days and then up all night. Eating all night. Keep, get to shaking and going on, eat some more. Oh, it's not very much fun eating like that. Grabbing around and sailing everything, eating everything inside, walking everything inside, full of envy. That's when you look at your neighbor's stuff and you want it all. I wish you had a word on your nose and I had your Cadillac. Whatever. Your wife. Your children. You know, people kidnap kids. Kid. That used to be a capital offense for a long time. Kidnap. Envy. Phonu. Murder. Murder. Slaughter. It says in the Old Testament there that Cain slaughtered Abel, slaughtered him. He cut him and cut him and stabbed him and stabbed him and slaughtered him and chopped him up in little pieces. That's the kind of murder it is. That's like Moxie Gumbo that Brother Madden was talking about. Moxie Gumbo after shooting the guy's hand off, shooting him in the foot and laughing about it. That's the kind of murder. He looked at that man and said, Man, there's something wrong with you. Madden killed a lot of people, I guarantee. But I don't think he ever killed one of the majority. He killed a lot of people. He trained people how to kill. But he did it because he was in war. 
but he sure didn't go out there and, and delight in seeing people suffer and run and hide from one bush to another. Murderers! You see why I wanted that one up there, Brother Randall? <laughs> we were here. At Red Dose. Strife. Wrangling. Wrestling. What do you see when you put, when you got three little boy cats out in the yard growing up together? A lot of wrangling and, rat, and, and wrestling. Because they're natural wranglers. They're practicing to be a mean when they get over. And then do low. That means the guile. That means the seat. That means to catch with bait. Like fishermen. You're going out there and throwing something out there. It really isn't something for a fish to eat, but you're tricking the fish. It's bait. Women winning men with a smile and men winning women with a smile. For to see. For to see. Hated hussies. As they used to say so long, many years ago. A painted hussy? Yeah, painted hussies. <laughs> this deceit to gab by bait. <laughs> All right? That's what Brother Hubbard used to say. No, that's what he, this is what he, for, for deceit. All right? Cacathesios. It means uh, malignity. Backbiters. Treachery. <coughs> when, you, when you are treacherous to somebody. To kill with treachery. And then we have the word Cthiristos. Si, it means to constantly be cruel. It means to whisper. And to, it literally means to speak in the ear and to deceive. You know, they used to have a plays in the old days in the early west with the old devil speaking in somebody's ear, you know. And old always had a, a fork, a fish fork in his hand and a, and a tail with a plug tip on it and a long nose and pointed ears and things like that. And he whispered in people's ears. Kata la loose. All right. That's where we're going to start next week. That's it. I'm done with it. <laughs> For tonight. 11, and what is the day? The 10th? Boy, you know, this time next year, it's going to be 11, 11, 11. And it'll be upside down or right side forward. It might, won't make any difference. All right, we're going to start there. It actually continues on from the verse we have tonight. Well, that was a hard lesson, a strong lesson for today in the world today. We always, the world always plays down sin, but the Bible doesn't do that. The Bible doesn't play down sin. Sin is sin, and wrong is wrong, and right is right, and that's what it is. Well, I'm going to turn you loose on the world. Rebecca, would you dismiss us in prayer tonight, please? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to listen to your word and to study your word. And, and you've opened my mind.